Managing Individual Investor Portfolios. In this summary video, I will go over key concepts which are based on the sorts of questions I've seen in past papers. Generally, there will be a question on return objectives, there will be questions related to risk, there will be questions related to constraints. The most important constraints are the liquidity constraint and the time horizon constraint. Taxes will generally be considered in the context of the return objective and then more complicated questions on taxes will be part of another reading. Regulatory requirements represents another constraint but it's hard to have anything standard there because regulatory requirements will vary and if there is a question related to regulatory requirements then chances are that the relevant information will be given to you in the case. We'll briefly talk about asset allocation and Monte Carlo simulations. Again, the focus here is on the types of questions that I've seen in past papers. Let's start with a discussion on the return objective. Here, what I have done is looked at questions over the last 10 years, and it is almost guaranteed that you will get a question related to the return objective. Now, very broadly speaking, there are two types of return objective questions. Either you can have a multi-period question or you can have a single period question. What I'm going to do now is just give you a framework for dealing with both these types of questions. And then I will work you through a few sample questions. Then your job is to actually do all these questions. All right. so. Let's talk about the two broad categories here. As I said, we have single period questions and multi period questions. With single period questions, you have a particular portfolio and this is also called the investable assets. There is a requirement, so a spending requirement or a need requirement for the year or for the period. And then you need to calculate a return. So the cash needed is the spending requirement over the year. The investable assets are the assets at the start of the year. So this essentially is the portfolio. And then based on the investable assets and the spending requirement for the year, we need to calculate the required return. Very often the question will say that the investor wants to maintain the purchasing power of investable assets. If that is what is being said, then you need to add inflation to the number that you calculated over here. So for example, if investable assets are 100, cash needed is 6, and inflation rate is 2, then you will calculate a return of 6 over 100, which is 6%. If inflation is 2, then you need to add 2% to give you the nominal required rate of return. And we are going to see this in our practice questions. With multi-period questions, there are four elements. So here there is time zero, there is time t which represents retirement, and then there are several periods. We'll have to calculate or determine these periodic cash flows. There will be an initial portfolio which is also called our investable assets. There will be some final portfolio amount and then there will be a required rate to get from here to here given these intermediate cash flows. There might be questions where you are told that every year there is a certain amount saved and that amount goes to a tax deferred account. If you have such a situation, then you need to calculate the spending need based on a pre-tax amount. And again, I will illustrate this in an example. So. You can be tested in many ways here. One situation might be where you need to determine one, two, three, and then based on your answers to these, you have to calculate a rate. There might be another situation where you are given the rate and you are asked to calculate what initial amount will be necessary to meet this final requirement. Now, again, as you work through several papers, you will start understanding how to deal with these problems. There is absolutely no substitute to practice. So go over my videos where I give you the general framework and then the onus is on you to practice several questions. 
So let us now look at this sample question which deals with a multi-period scenario. You have a client, this is client A, who is 30 years old and plans to retire when he is 60. The pre-tax annual compensation is 200,000, the tax rate is 30%, annual expenditure is 100,000. The savings go to a tax deferred account. The annual savings every year are expected to be the same and these annual savings are based on the numbers given here. The savings go to this tax deferred account. The current value of the tax deferred account is 1 million. You determine that on retirement your client will need 3.5 million on a pre-tax basis. What is the required rate of return based on the numbers given here? I want you to do this first before you look at the answer. So here is what needs to happen. Recognize that we have a 30 year horizon. The client is currently 30 and will retire when he is 60. So he has 30 years to save. The pre-tax annual compensation is 200,000. Tax rate is 30%. Annual expenditure is 100,000. Note that the money goes into a tax deferred account. The savings go to a tax deferred account. So the first thing you need to do is figure out how much money on a pre-tax basis must be earned in order to cover this expense. And the way we do that calculation is 100,000, that's his expenditure after tax, divided by 1 minus the tax rate gives you this number, 142,857. So he must earn this much on a pre-tax basis in order to be able to spend 100,000. Another way of looking at this is if he does, if he earns 142,857 and then from this we subtract out the tax, this will give us 100,000. The reason we do this calculation is that the money which goes into a tax deferred account is pre-tax. So if he needs this much income on a pre-tax basis, then his savings will be 200,000 minus 142,857, which is 57,143. So let me explicitly write this down. 200,000 minus 142,857, and that is 57,143. So every year now, he puts this much pre-tax money into his tax deferred account. Conveniently, we are told that this money stays the same throughout the 30 year period. The current value of the tax deferred account portfolio is 1 million and on retirement, the client will need this much on a pre-tax basis. So you simply use your financial calculator now. N is 30. The present value is 1 million. The payment is what we calculated. This is the money that's going into the account every year. The future value is minus 3.5 million, minus because the money will be taken out. We are using a convention that money going in, i.e. the initial investment or the initial amount, and then the payments. So these are shown as positive, and then the money coming out is negative. We compute the required rate and that is 1.23%. So that's the answer. That's the required rate of return. Now, I also want to point out some common mistakes that students make on questions like this. One of the mistakes is to calculate the savings on an after-tax basis. So what people do is say that the tax rate is 30%. So after tax income is 200,000 into one minus the tax rate, which is 140,000. And then they subtract 100,000, which is the expenses and end up with 60,000. And they plug in 60,000 as the payment. That would be incorrect because we are putting money 
that will be incorrect because the client is putting money into a tax deferred account. So we really need to calculate the amount of money that is going in pre-tax. The second issue is not recognizing the plus minus convention when we use the calculator. And this is something that you did at level one. Recognize that if the payments represent money being put in and we have a certain value up front. So in that case, the sign of the present value and the payments need to be the same. The future value is money being taken out, so that sign is negative. If there were another situation where money was being taken out on a regular basis from the portfolio, then the payment would be the opposite sign from the present value. So if the client had to continuously take money out of the investment account, then we could have a positive value for the PV, negative values for the money being taken out and a negative value for the future value. So make sure you practice enough of these questions so that you know how to use the calculator well. Client B has just retired. Net investable assets are 2 million. Your client has a home valued 600,000, but this home has been completely paid off. There is no mortgage debt. The client has an after tax pension worth 40,000. This amount is flat in the sense that it doesn't change. It stays the same. Your client's current living expenses are 150,000. The living expenses, however, will increase with inflation. The inflation rate is 2%. Your client wants to maintain the real value of investable assets. So now, what is the required after-tax nominal rate of return for the first year? I want you to try this before looking at the solution. So here is what you need to do. This is a popular category of questions and you need to follow a three-step process. Step one is to determine the year one cash flow. Step two is to determine the investable assets. And then step three is to calculate the required return, first in real terms, then in nominal terms. Let's do step one first, first year cash flow. We are told that the living expenses in the current year are 150,000. Now, if this is time zero, current year refers to the year that has just gone by. So in this year that's just gone by, the expenses are 150,000. So in the upcoming year, what are the living expenses going to be? We are told that the expenses will go up with inflation. The inflation rate is 2%, so the living expenses will be 150,000 times 1.02, which is this number. What is the net cash flow need? Our client is also receiving 40,000 in terms, our client is also receiving a 40,000 pension amount. So we subtract the 40,000 pension and come up with 113,000. This is the net cash flow needed in year one. Next is investable assets. Here we are simply given the number. There will be other questions where we need to calculate the net investable assets. But all you need to recognize here is that the home where your client is living is not considered part of investable assets. So this number is to be ignored. You simply work with the net investable assets and that number is 2 million. Then step three is calculate the required rate of return. The real rate of return is the cash flow needed divided by the investable assets. So that is 5.56. Note this statement over here. The client wants to maintain the real value of investable assets. This means that the portfolio value needs to increase by 2%. So it needs to go up by 2%. 2% is the inflation rate. If the value of the portfolio goes up by 2%, then 
essentially we are maintaining the real value of investable assets so that's why we need to add the 2% this in essence is the inflation adjustment and the overall nominal required rate becomes 7.65% what I have done here is simply added these two numbers and by and large this is acceptable but when the nominal rate is calculated using this method the answer is approximate the more precise method is as follows we can say that 1 plus the nominal rate is equal to 1 plus the real rate times 1 plus inflation and then we can plug the numbers so 1 plus the real rate becomes 1.0565 1 plus inflation becomes 1.02 and when we do the calculation we will get 1.07763 and n then is equal to 0 0.07763 which is 7.76 percent so notice this is just slightly higher than 7.65 this is the more precise answer what I also want to do here is quickly describe why this approximation works so why can we say that the nominal rate is approximately equal to the real rate plus inflation for that we use simple algebra so if we consider this equation we can then say 1 plus n is equal to and then we actually use algebra to multiply these two expressions we can say 1 plus r into 1 plus i is equal to 1 plus r plus i plus r times i this is your grade 7 maths where you learned how to multiply these two brackets the 1 and the 1 cancel out and notice if r and i are small numbers and if we are working in decimals here i is 0 0.02 in our example r is 0 0.0565 the product of these two numbers is going to be very small essentially negligible so we can cancel this out and then say that n is approximately equal to r plus i so that's where this approximation comes from for the sake of your exam by and large with problems like this you can use this particular approximation where you are asked to use the multiplicative rule then you should use this method now I also want to point out some common mistakes one major mistake is forgetting to increase the living expenses to account for inflation so a student might see that the current living expenses are 150,000 ignore the fact that there is inflation and simply use 150,000 over here so that is one mistake another mistake is not subtracting the pension note that what we need here is the net cash flow for year one if your client is getting pension then that number needs to be subtracted and then the biggest mistake is not adding inflation at the end the question explicitly says that the client wants to maintain the real value of investable assets whenever you see this statement the inflation number of two percent must be added if the client is not particularly concerned about maintaining the real value of investable assets and just wants to maintain the nominal value then a return of 5.65 is sufficient but given this statement we need to add the 2% number 5.65 is enough just to generate the required cash flow so that 113,000 is the 5.65% to maintain the value of the portfolio the real value of the portfolio we add 2% so the mistake people make is they forget to add this even though the question is giving us this particular requirement client C has sold his business for 8 million and has retired the cost basis of the business is zero taxes are due on the gain from sale of business at 20% net proceeds from the sale of business will be added to his investment portfolio next week the investment portfolio is taxable 
and has a current market value of 2 million. Client C wants to grow the investment portfolio over time to maintain its after-tax purchasing power. He will receive payments of 100,000 per year from a trust fund established by his parents. The first payment is due next week. These payments are not indexed to inflation and will be taxed as ordinary income at 25%. Investment income is also taxed at 25%. Living expenses for last year were 400,000 and are expected to grow at the inflation rate of 2%. Client C owns his home worth 3 million. His mortgage debt is 2 million. He wants to pay off this debt immediately. Determine the nominal after-tax required rate of return for the coming year. What is the nominal before-tax rate? So now I want you to work through this before you look at the solution. So here is the three-step process you need to use. Step one is determine the year one cash flow. Step two, determine the investable assets. And step three, calculate the required return. So what is the year one cash flow? We are told that living expenses for last year were 400,000. So if this is time zero, the living expenses for the year that just ended equal 400,000. So for year one, the living expenses would be 400,000 times 1.02. 2% is the inflation rate. So 408,000, this is our living expense or our client's living expense for year one. The client receives payments of 100,000. These payments are not indexed to inflation and will be taxed as ordinary income at 25%. So we take the 100,000, we take out the taxes and we are left with 75,000. Here we do not add inflation because we are told that this payment is not indexed to inflation. The net cash flow needed in year one then is 333,000. Okay, now coming to investable assets. We are told that the business is sold for 8 million. The cost basis is zero, which means that the 20% tax applies to the entire 8 million. And so the net proceeds from sale of business are 6.4 million. The portfolio is worth 2 million. So that's this number over here. So that's also part of client C's investable assets. And then client C wants to pay off this 2 million mortgage. So we want to subtract that number and we end up with total investable assets worth 6.4 million. Then we calculate the required return. The real return is equal to the cash flow divided by the investable assets here at time zero after paying taxes and paying off the mortgage debt. But here again, the client wants to maintain the after-tax purchasing power of the portfolio. So that's why we have to add inflation. So this is similar to what we saw on an earlier problem. The overall required return then becomes 7.2%. This is the nominal return. What if we were asked to calculate the before-tax rate? Then we simply take the 7.2 number, which is the required after-tax return, and divide by 1 minus the tax rate, so 1.0.25, and that gives us 9.6%.